In this video, we'll use pedigrees to trace autosomal recessive traits through generations in a family. Autosomal recessive disorders you may be familiar with include sickle cell anemia and cystic fibrosis. In this case, autosomal refers to the fact that the trait you're looking at is associated with a gene on an autosome, like chromosome 1 or chromosome 2. This means that each person has two copies of this gene. The fact that the trait is recessive means that an affected person must be homozygous recessive for the allele associated with the trait. So for example, let's say the gene that is associated with your trait has two alleles, a dominant allele and a recessive allele. When dealing with a trait that is inherited in an autosomal recessive manner, a person with the homozygous recessive genotype will be affected, and a person will be unaffected by the trait if they are homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Let's take a look at some pedigrees to learn the rules of autosomal recessive inheritance. When you have two affected parents, that means that both parents must always pass on the recessive allele and therefore all of their offspring must be affected as well. Furthermore, when you have two unaffected parents, they can still have affected children. That is because both parents might be heterozygous and therefore able to pass on either their recessive allele or the dominant allele to their children. This means that you will often see a trait of interest skipping a generation when you're dealing with an autosomal recessive trait. With those two rules in mind, let's take a look at some practice pedigrees to see if we can tell if the trait is inherited in an autosomal recessive manner. When we look at this pedigree, the first thing that stands out is that this couple is both affected and have all affected children which falls in line with the rules associated with autosomal recessive traits. If this man is homozygous recessive, then his parents must both carry the recessive allele, and since they are both unaffected, that means that they are heterozygous. So the rest of their children could be heterozygous or homozygous dominant. Now if we look over here, we can see that we have two unaffected parents, with some unaffected children and an affected child. If this child is affected, then these parents must both be heterozygous, which is possible given the rest of the information we have here. So this pedigree is a good example of one in which the trait could be inherited in an autosomal recessive manner. Now let's take a look at this pedigree. Is the trait in this pedigree inherited in an autosomal recessive manner? Automatically, I look at this subfamily. Here we have two affected parents who have an affected son and two unaffected daughters. This is not possible when a trait is carried in an autosomal recessive manner. If the trait were an autosomal recessive trait, then these two affected parents would both be homozygous recessive, and they would only pass on recessive alleles to their offspring. The fact that these two daughters are unaffected means that they would not be homozygous recessive. That means that this trait does not follow the pattern you would expect with autosomal recessive inheritance. So we can assume that the trait in this pedigree is inherited by some other mode of inheritance. So now you should feel comfortable determining if a trait in a pedigree is inherited in an autosomal recessive manner. If you'd like to learn more, see my videos on tracing other modes of inheritance in pedigrees, like autosomal dominant traits and sex-linked traits.